Hi, Dr. Tom Anderson here with Word for Winners with my lovely wife. Maureen Anderson, and, and we're so we're excited, excited about, about sharing about the Word of Grace again today. Oh, we love it because grace, when we got that revelation of grace, though we was in under Andrew Womack's ministry for many years, once we got a revelation, it was it was so life amazing, changing. life changing moment. Well, he yes. sowed so much in us that yes, finally, finally got revelation of it. Bless and though we God, got thank you. along the way, we got free of legalism and religion. But then we got the revelation, and then we just stepped right into that new covenant. That's of it. Grace. Well, tell me a little bit about your book over there. Oh, okay. This is the book after that revelation of grace that that I got, and then the Lord said, "I want you to go uh, cover the earth with the word of grace." God and had truth. me write this book. This and this is a workbook that goes along with the book, and you can use this for a Bible study. You can use this, uh, uh, you know, just for your own personal use or for the church, for a women's ministry. People have Bible done study, that. Home Bible study, whatever. Yeah, women's ministry. But also, um, Jesse DePlano said it was the best book he's ever read on grace. Yeah, Jesse never said anything about my book, but it is a really good book on Oh, it is very good. Maximizing yeah, well, you didn't, grace. You didn't send him your book. He I would have said that. Him, but it is a really good oh book. Oh, my gosh. And I'm going to see so some, are, some from it today. And yeah. We're actually in Chapter 6. And yes. I encourage you to get the book because it will benefit you greatly to yeah. really grasp and understand it. So much taught about grace out there and, and sloppy grace and all kinds of different mentalities and ideas. But grace is that God has, through Christ Jesus, finished past, present, and future, put us in a fully qualified position for the promises of God. And we got saved by faith through grace, and it should have been from the foundation of your salvation that you understood grace. But now here we are presenting understanding, finally, for what grace is and what grace did. Jesus came, uh, actually, to be a witness of the truth or the witness of who Father God was, that we would get a right image. Grace should give us the right image of God, that he is only good and that he has the Holy Spirit is God's thoughts, attitudes, and intentions for us, and they are all good. That's why the Holy Spirit constantly leads us to truth, which Amen. is who God is. Jesus is the Word, but he didn't do anything. He didn't hear his Father say, and the Holy Spirit doesn't act on his own or talk on his own. He only says what and leads us to what Jesus said. Yeah. So we have a good understanding of the Word. Yeah, I was thinking as you were talking here, is that the right image of Father God. That's what Jesus came. It's critical. Because there was the image in our subconscious that was painted at that time that he was he was a harsh Hard uh, taskmaster. Hard taskmaster. Not a loving God, but a, 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 an abusive father. And so Jesus had to come and say, no, this is how what the enemy has painted, and this is what the religious leaders have given to you. And so I was thinking about this as, you know, I, I grew up with my husband, and uh, I was a freshman in high school, and we were... Mm, and, and I fell in love. Yes, yes, okay. and he was a senior... In high school, but first hour of most every day, he was kicked out of school. Oh, no. Yes, yes, you were. Could you tell and, him that? Yes, I and didn't. so, but the thing about it was that I came from a, a home that my father just had problems with violence and, and abuse, all right? And so I had that image inside of me. Didn't know it till the Holy Spirit showed me. That's why I was, I didn't break any rules because I didn't want to set my dad off. And, and uh, you fell into that with the yes, word. Yes, and then when I got born and again, and I made sure I did everything perfect and right. That you were I good thought, at two shoes beyond. Yes, but anyway, my husband would get kicked out, and his father worked at the school, and his he father would say to you, "Hey, Tommy, let's go down and get a piece of pie." So we walked down to the hotel. Yeah, and, and so he didn't get disciplined. Spent some time. And together. so the Lord was showing me because Dr. Tom has always had this image of Father God loving him unconditionally, always. even when he was oh. not living right. You know, as a teenager and older, you know, in his early twenties until we got engaged in that, wasn't living right. Uh, but but he always felt God loved him, was never mad at him, read, read the word at night before he went I to did. sleep, prayed. And so because because his father showed this the This is before I was born again, of course. Yeah, 
Yeah. You, the, your father showed you the unconditional love of a father. His father knew that Tommy knew he did something wrong. He was he was wrong in his behavior, but his father chose to to minister to him on that he needed the, the unconditional love of a father, and so that's what he gave him. And I remember when we got married, I just felt like your father was the most loving father because of what I I lived through that I'd ever seen. And uh but God just showed me lately that that Dr. Tom never struggled with the father God being a heavy taskmaster or a moral police of the universe. He never struggled with that. He nope. just thought God loves you unconditionally. I mean, he lived a right life, but he Once felt like I got born like, again, we straightened right up yeah, to you did. to a good life that produced life. Yeah. I mean, that we did but do that believed. without thinking about legalism of what yeah. you can't do. Yeah. You just begin to flow into what feels right and what is right. Yeah, and you let the Holy Spirit Followed lead the truth you. But you had such a right image of God, and that's what I want to bring to you. It's so important to have that right image and to portray that to your own children, that kind of a loving father. Not that you shouldn't discipline, but being led by the Holy Spirit and how to handle each situation. Yeah, the early church was trying to tell me, you can't do this, yes, you can't go to the movies, you can't dance, you yeah. can't listen to that music, that bad. I'm going, that's not my God. I always thought... Good Lord likes a little picking too. So uh, yeah. I just, uh, I never bought into that part of it, but I bought in to the life that my God would give me because he loved me like I am. Yeah, a loving father. If that. he loved me before I got saved and I was a mess, why wouldn't he love me now? And this is what I want to share okay, out of chapter six. You know, in the Old Testament, we were considered the people of God. And now we'll and, and once I, we get into John chapter 15, into the New Testament, and Jesus, the Word, is walking in the flesh on earth, he said, but now you were called children or people of God in the Old Testament, but now I call you friends. So yeah. we move from people to, in other words, we had a God. Then we became a friend of God. Yeah. That's true. But then... What's really cool is that once we are born again, the Bible calls us children of God. Yes. Now, this is born again experience, but we actually become blood with Father God. We gain a new DNA. We go to something that has changed us from uh, uh, and to a new, whole new inheritance. Look what it says. A new person. In verse 16, it says the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, we are joint heirs with Christ right. Jesus. Can, can you get a picture of the change from the Old Testament people and how the law operated and how, and then you get a hold of Jesus? Now he's trying to call us in closer that we are friends as he walked on the earth, the word, but in the death, burial, and resurrection, he gave us power to be born again through grace, by faith, through grace, to become a child of God. Yes. Well, it's a major and change. We, 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 and as a, as a child, now, now I have full rights to the inheritance, joint heirs with Christ Jesus. Yes, but all, oh my gosh. Yeah, we're one with Christ Jesus now. Who he is, is now is who we are. That's it. But then we're an heir of God, so everything that is Father God's in the kingdom of God is now ours because we're we're citizens of heaven. We're members of His household. We're seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, and 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 we're we're children of Father God. So His names become our names, and and so what His a name becomes name? our name. Yeah. And we just did a series on His we name. Did. They can go to. The, YouTube and listen to all yeah. the different names yeah. of God and how each one of those names of God are positive and good in our life. And we can call on Elohim for energy and strength. We can yeah. call on El Shaddai for supernatural provision. We can, we can call El, El uh, Jehovah Jireh for full provision. I mean, all of the goodness yeah. of God's wrapped in his name. And I am joint heirs with Christ. His Jesus. name and is now yours. His name, name is now my name. And that's what the word of God tells us. And and so so this is the excitement of oh, our new covenant of grace. And Jesus, uh, 
Jesus did it all. He went to the cross. He paid for our, our death through his death, burial, and resurrection. He paid for our sins. He paid the penalty totally. He broke, he, he became a he curse for it. us that we are now free from the curse in the new covenant. It's blessing and blessing. And the old covenant was blessing and curses. And so the, the old covenant was good. I'm not saying it's bad. There's so many pictures and things of the old covenant, but but the old covenant couldn't save us because of our, our sinful nature from Adam. We needed the new covenant. We needed Christ Jesus to come now, and we needed him to fulfill the old covenant, the law, so that we could now be joint heirs with him and his works and his completion. And, his child. and we could enter into the rest of God now to just believe and receive and let it flow through us. You could Where never you be a child of God if no. you were a temple of sin. But because when you receive Christ, he pays for past, present, and future, he can dwell within, yeah. which is the Hebrew letter, second Hebrew letter is be it or Beth Rashid, and it, it simply means holy dwelling place for Father God. So from the foundation of time, God wanted to live in us. Yes. And he provided a way through Christ Jesus that we could not only be born in the natural flesh, but now born of the Spirit and become a child of God. Amen. If people oh. got, a, if you're a child of God, do you think God wants to beat you up? God wants to make you sick. God wants to hurt you. God wants, you don't do that to your children. You love your children. You want the best for your children. You give everything you possibly can to your children because you want them to have the best possible Amen. life. That's what a good parent is. Well, my God is a good parent and he wants the best possible for me. That's why when I started out, I said, we have Father God, the power of God flowing through the word of God to the Holy Spirit who now works with us as a helper on this earth to lead us consistently to truth, lead us consistently to life and life yeah, more abundant. Oh, and yeah. this is how we actually become partakers of his divine nature. Well, it says through his great and precious promises. Abs oh, my goodness. We should read that scripture right here. Go ahead, read it. Yeah. Uh, 2 Peter 1, 3-4. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and oh, godliness. Oh, my goodness. Wait a minute. Life and godliness. Yeah. So, or goodness. Yeah. All things. All things that pertain to that. Through the knowledge of him. So we get that knowledge of him in the word, right? Mm -hmm. Who called us by glory and virtue. Purpose. Yes. yes. By which we have been given to us exceedingly great. Exceedingly great Wait a minute and now. Exceedingly precious, great promises. And precious promises. Amen. And the word of God then is designed to well, work in us because God is truth. So those promises, we have to take them and receive them. That's where we get it. And I was saying this earlier. I used to read the word, you know, before I came into the revelation of grace. And, of course, I was going to do everything it said. But I'd read the word. Right. And then I would then I would go over here and do the word. It was two separate things. Read the word, do the word. But when I got grace, I saw it different. I saw it what was Christ had already done. And now it was receiving and believing that promise, receiving those works, receiving that now to work through me. I I wasn't separate. I was one. But it was the word now producing through my life, activating me, energizing me, and producing the fruit in my life. It was just a change. And and this is this is so important because it goes on to say that through Come the on, great and precious promises, the promises the devil does not want you to believe for he the does promises not want you to have or the receive promises. the promises because of this. It says this that through these he has made us partakers of his divine nature, partakers of him divine nature. Oh my goodness! And God and is having, good, so we have the potential oh. to operate in a good life. Oh, yeah. Not by bud life, but by the good life comes <laughs> from the word of God. Yeah. Amen. Anyway, but it goes on to say, having escaped the corruption that comes you know, from this world through loss. 
So because we escaped the, it because he paid the because price. Because it's going for it. through us. It's going through us. The, the word's word going through us. Blowing. The grace is going through us. He's the vine. We're the branch flowing through us. So by that, it holds us in the that's kingdom of God. That's how you produce good fruit. Yeah, and not bad fruit, yeah. but good fruit. That's why it says we can't do nothing on our own. So me thinking I could do something separate from you, you know, can't produce no, good fruit. No. But through him, we can produce good fruit. Yeah, because it's him producing it through us. It's him. Absolutely. So when they see us, they should see Jesus. That's what the word says. We live and move and have our being in Christ Jesus. We that, That's what we do. Amen. God is truth and God is love. Yeah. And it, once you get a hold of those two principles, then you realize what God's divine nature is. When we become partakers of divine nature, God's divine nature is when we choose to believe what he said. Yes. Because that's what allows faith to work through mm -hmm. grace in our life. And then receive his unconditional love. Yes. When you receive his unconditional love, you can love everyone. You don't have to love their behavior, but we have a responsibility to, to love, love God's people. creation. Yes. And who God's, all, all people, we have a responsibility to love unconditional. We don't have to love their behavior. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is meant and designed to deal with behavior yes. if they're willing to. Oh. In other words, a better way of saying it, just speaking truth to people won't necessarily change people. Or just loving people will not necessarily change people. But when you have love in operation and the presentation of truth, now you speak truth but that's what in Jesus love. Did. Come on. Jesus loved people unconditionally, but he spoke the truth to them. And when truth came, they were free. All the examples. He said, go and sin no more. They were they were free. That's exactly right. They were right. free. The he, power of those words, boom, they were free. He always held them accountable with a the person with Gerasim when he set them all wait, wait. set set the the man free that had been tied to tombstones for years, he went there with one purpose in mind, all the way across the lake, to set this one person free. Because, That's the love of God right there. Yeah, because God looks at the heart. He looked at, and set him free of legions. And we know all the story about a lot of, a lot of bacon went over the cliff. We don't understand <laughs> it. But, but really the principle here is get what he said. Jesus set him free, but the man said, I want to follow you, which is a good thing. But Jesus said, no, I need you to be accountable now for your behavior and deal with your life. You believe he's already, all the good things have happening to him, but now he has to be accountable for his he life. He has to go back and show what be God had done for him. Show what God had done. And so dealing with one person sometimes can save a whole town. Yeah. Just as the woman at the well yeah. got her saved, saved the whole town. Yes. But the thing about it is you Through have to Through truth realize. and love. God God doesn't look at the outward appearance. He looks at the heart. And so in the prayer, I believe when Father God and Jesus was praying and communicating in the morning, God gave Jesus the assignment of the day to the hearts that he saw needed him, crying out for him. And Jesus went and, and fulfilled that and met the heart cry of, of people. And he still meets the heart cry of people. Love of God. Love, love of God. God. Love of God. Is, now, God wants us to be partakers of his divine nature, as I just mentioned, but that would be love, light, and light. That, that's kind of the way it's presented in the ancient Hebrew, but he is love, light, and life. That That's kind of what we should be on this earth. We yeah. should be operating in love, operating, spreading the light and the goodness of God yeah. and life. We should love life to its fullest and live that life for the purpose of spreading the gospel and Amen. reaching people Amen. because he gave it to us. Amen. So that's really important. But I want to take it to uh, Abraham, the covenant of Abraham, Abraham of covenant also, because I say. But you know, I was going to say this one thing, because God, because Abraham preached the gospel. That's what he the did. word tells us in Galatians chapter 3. Well, he received three. the gospel in but Galatians God chapter 3. To him, I think it's in James where it says that God called Abraham friend. He was the, he was the one that was called friend Brand because nice. because he uh, um, he received the grace of God. Right, believed in, received, he received the 
The unconditional love of God. He had that relationship of a friend with uh, God. With he God. believed God and was counted as righteousness, yeah. as the Bible says in Romans. So he had that relationship. Couldn't be a child of no. God yet because, because he had the death, the burial, and resurrection. Couldn't, but he had grace. Yeah, he could believe and receive the grace, but he still had to de- he, until Jesus died on the cross through the death, burial, and resurrection, actually did it. Then he could. Abraham was one of those that saw it at a distance he, because yeah. he received grace. Yes, he did. He, he, you could see the goodness of God operate in his life, even though Abraham didn't do everything right. Yeah. And you think about when he. Your human mind can't comprehend what I'm about to say because, you know, he gave his wife over to the Pharaoh. Yeah, but I. Really, but God turned it around to such goodness. Yeah. And he left with more wealth and nothing happened to her. So, I, so God is showing us the power of grace and how he can take a bad situation, turn it into a good situation, how he doesn't hold things consistently against it, but forgives and forgets. And I think that Abraham and Sarah, they knew, they knew ahead of time and with the grace of God, knew that that the Pharaoh would kill Abraham. They had to go there and that God would protect Sarah. So he had no fear. He had no fear. Fear. And Sarah didn't have any fear. And that was the plan they felt to go with. And and it all worked out great. And he left with more because wealth. Because God did take care of Sarah. Did. And, uh, Protected and, her. And then left with more wealth. Left with more wealth. So when we think about the Abraham covenant, we are now sons and daughters of Abraham, so to speak. Yeah. through Christ Jesus. I mean, we are sons and daughters, but because Jesus used that in Luke chapter 9, he is the son of Abraham. This is before salvation. Yeah. When he talked to the rich men, or Zacchaeus, I think it was. Yeah. But he, God's plan for us is to be prosperous. He wants us to have, he wants us to experience wealth, health, joy, peace, yeah. and highly favored. And this is God's plan. So the Holy Spirit is constantly, by grace, yeah. Fully qualified, we can receive because the Holy Spirit will constantly lead us to more and more life in our life. That is so true. Or life, life more abundant is really what God desires. God, great, you know, God sent Jesus to save humanity, but it's still bound on whosoever will. That's the truth. You still have a freedom of choice to receive Christ. Or not receive Christ. And you know, it's the same thing walking, you know, continue to walk in Christ as you have received him. And so as we go along, the Holy Spirit's right there to, to show us or things are not working in our life like the words that they should. We have the Holy Spirit as our counselor, as our advocate, as our intercessor, and we can go to him and ask him why. And the Holy Spirit will tell us why and walk us through it. And, uh, and and also show us our baggage. What what do I believe in my subconscious? What what am I believing that's contrary to what God's word is? The, we don't go looking for that. We go to the Holy Spirit and have Him help us. Like this is not working. What's going on, Holy Spirit? Help me! And, he, and the Holy Spirit's right there to show us. And we get it is the re- right it away. is it is the reason that we have to. Your natural mind cannot comprehend the grace of God no. or His goodness, no. because we make we, we make such judgments no. about so many things and think, well, why is what? Why would God allow that? Or why would all kinds of? Well, we don't understand the grace yeah. is something that's received by faith yeah. from the invisible. That's the truth. It's not received by figuring it out. No, because the Bible says it. You know, trust God with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. That's acknowledging Him in all my ways, and He will direct my path. Wow. Praise God. That's That's it. That's the word God gave me years ago, years ago. For them to receive the revelation of grace. Yeah, you you prayed this time. I prayed last week. Okay. You're on this time. So let's receive. We receive freely. We receive. We can freely give you the revelation of grace. So just just join with me in prayer. Father God, those that are out there, they want to get free of law and religion. The old covenant's obsolete. They died to it. The word tells us to die to the law, that we might belong to another. So they died to it. They want all, all ties and attachments to that law to be severed 
and Jesus free, name body, soul, be spirit. gone obsolete and now they connect right now in the name of Jesus they connect to the new covenant of grace they receive it that they belong to Christ Jesus that they're one with Christ Jesus that they bear fruit unto God and they receive that revelation now in Jesus name and I freely give it to them Jesus name Amen. Amen. And if you never received Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to receive him right now. God wishes that none should perish, but all should come to the saving knowledge of Christ. This is an opportunity. Don't let it pass you by. And it's not about religion and it's not about giving up stuff. It's all about gaining the goodness of God. Just pray the prayer with me. I double dog dare you to watch your life change as a result. <laughs> I just ask you just right now, just repeat after me. Dear Father God, I ask you to forgive me of all my sin. Yes. And I ask you, dear Jesus, come into my life, come into my heart, be my Lord and my, and my Savior. Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. And you will, you, you, right now, you are not the same person. Nope. You have been born into the kingdom of God, and you're going to see dramatic change in your wants, desires, mm -hmm. and direction, and what great things God has laid in store for you. Amen. Amen. Yes, and I really encourage you, if you really enjoyed this teaching today and want to hear more about grace, you can go to beltwordforwinners.com uh, and you can go and you can purchase these books or you can go to our YouTube, Dr. C. Thomas Anderson, that's his author's name, Dr. C. Thomas Anderson, and you can get the teachings on there that we're teaching now. Right now, you're and, watching, watching And them over again. the years, yeah. all the different teachings. And uh, we really encourage you to like, subscribe, and share. That would really bless us. And, uh, and we'd also say, you know, if you can give financially into this ministry, God has called us, visit us in grace, to go to the nations, uh, His church with grace and truth. Yes. and to go to cover the earth with the word of grace and that is television and youtube and those things that we are doing now along with our travels and helping along with churches all the ministries we have and going we on, yeah. help churches get out of base off base one and flourish and grow and mentor them and help them so we would really love to receive financial blessings you get credit for everything that we do as you give in we are big givers word for winner gives uh, all over the world into large ministries, into orphanages, helping churches, building churches. Uh, we just, we, we're just very generous ministry. So we, we really encourage you. Whatever we do. Yeah, you do. For the body of Christ and the kingdom of God, you are there. Yes. See you next time. Yes. God bless you. We love you. Are you ready to see more of the grace of God in your life? In the workbook, God's Grace Fuels My Passion, Dr. Maureen Anderson goes into an in-depth study of the life of grace and what that means. The law binds you, but grace brings you freedom. This book paints a picture of what grace truly is. Through personal testimonies, this is a life-changing revelation that God wants for you. Find this resource and more at thewordforwinners.com.